In this video, we would discuss about SCP and RSync in Linux. SCP means secure copy. RSync means remote sync. Both SCP and RSync are used to transfer the files between two machines. In the diagram, we have server 1 and server 2. So, using SCP and RSync, we can transfer the files between server 1 and server 2. That means, we can upload the files from server 1 to server 2 and also we can download the files from server 2 to server 1. So, in this video, we will see in detail about SCP and RSync commands and also we will see what are the differences between SCP and RSync and what are their applications. Let us start. So, here we have two servers, server 1 and server 2. Now, we would like to see the transfer of files between server 1 and server 2. In the first case, let us consider SCP. So, to transfer the files from server 1 to server 2, we should have a username in server 2. So, here we have the username as test user and when we use the SCP command, the user should be authenticated. So, the authentication can happen using password or using private key and public key. So, let us start with password initially. Then, we will use private key, public key. So, in the server 1, I have a test directory and under the test directory, I have a test file is having around 500 MB and we also have testing directory here. And under testing directory, we have two text files. So now let us try to transfer this i.txt to the target server. So in the target server, we have a new directory here. So we will transfer to this new directory. So this is the target directory in the server 2. So let us use SCP command now. So we have to give SCP. Then we have to provide the path of the file. So this is the path of the source file. Then we have to provide the details of the target server. So initially we have to provide the username in the target server. So we can use server name or IP address. So let us try to get the IP address. So now we have to provide the target directory path. Let us get this path. So now we have entered the path of the target directory. So let us execute this command. So now it is asking for the password. So let us enter the password. So now it is saying no such file or directory. So here I have given wrongly. So let me change this one. So now we can see that the transfer of the file is successful. So let us go to the server 2 and check this. So now we can list the files here. So we can see that the hi.txt is transferred successfully. So now we have sent a file. If you want to transfer the entire directory, then we have to use the R option. So for that we have to give hyphen R here and we have to provide the directory. So the remaining details are same. So again enter the password. So now we can verify in the target machine. So now we can see that a new directory testing. So under this testing, So on the testing directory, we have both the files. So this way we can transfer a directory from source machine to target machine using SCP. So now we have seen how to upload the files. We can also download the files from, from server 2 to server 1 using SCP command. So for that let me remove all these files. So now I want to download all the files in this path in the server to the current directory in source. So, for that let us use same SCP command. So, here I will use SCP-R. So, now we have to specify the target server details. And then we have to give the source directory. So, here I will give current directory as dot. So, let us execute this. So, now we can enter the password. So, now let us list the files. So, now after listing we can see that we have got the entire new directory. We don't want the new directory but we want the contents of this new directory. So, for that let me remove again. So now again we need to change our command. So here under new directory we have to give start. So this way we can get the contents of new directory instead of new directory itself. So let us execute again. Let us list the files now. So now we can see that we got the new directory contents instead of new directory itself. So now we have seen how to upload and download the files 
between server 1 and server 2 using SCP command. So for these commands, we have used the password authentication. We can also set up passwordless authentication using private key and public key. So let us copy the content of the public key from source to the authorized keys in the target. So for that, let me open the content of the public key in the source server. So this public key should be copied to authorized keys of second server. So now we have saved the authorized keys file in the server 2. So let us test the SSH connectivity from server 1 to server 2 without any password. So for that let us execute SSH command from server 1. So now we are able to log in without any password. So let us exit now. So now let us send the file using SCP without any password. So for that let us send this hi.txt file to server 2 again using SCP. So this time the file transfer is complete without any password. So this way we can use passwordless communication for SCP by using private key public key concept. So if you want to know in detail how to set up the private key public key and how to establish this passwordless communication then please go through the video in the below description. So now we understood about the SCP commands in detail. So now let us go through the rsync command. For rsync commands, I will try to create a new directory here and I will try to copy all the contents of test directory to test directory 1. So now we will use the contents of this test directory 1 for rsync command. So let me go inside this. Again we have hi.txt file and testing directory here. So in the server 2, so here also I will make a new directory 1. So now we will try to copy the files to this directory using rsync command. So in server 1, so let us try to copy the hi.txt to the server using rsync command. So here we can mention the hi.txt. Now we have to mention the details of target server. So here I am giving new directory 1. So that means we are copying the file hi.txt to the new directory 1. So it is copied. So internally it is using SSH protocol. Since we have already set up the private key public key setup, so rsync also using the same passwordless communication. So that is why it is not asking any password here. So if you don't set up the private key public key, so then it will ask the password. So now let us go to server 2 and verify whether this file is transferred. Let us go inside new directory 1. So now we can see that the hi.txt file is transferred successfully. Similarly, we can sync the directories from the source to target or from the target to source. So now let us synchronize this testing directory from source to target. So for that again we will use rsync. So for recursive synchronization, so we have to use an option A. So here I will give testing and then we will provide the target details. Give slash here. So now the directory is synchronized. We can verify there. So now we can see that the testing directory is synchronized in the target server as well. So let us go inside. So we can see both the files here. So now I will remove the testing directory in the source. So now I will synchronize this testing directory from target to source. So here we need to specify the target first. So here we have to provide testing. So now we need to mention dot as current directory. So now let us verify in the current directory. So now we can see that even though we have deleted testing here, so that is synchronized by using rsync command. So this way rsync is used for transferring the files from source to target or from target to source. So now we have seen how the commands scp and rsync are used to transfer the files between two servers. So now let us see what is the difference between these two commands. So for that I will use the same directory here. So in the server 2, and I will create the new directory again here. So now let us try to transfer this testing directory. So let me start with SCP now. So now both the files are transferred. So let us check in the server 2. 
So we can go to testing directory now. So both the files are transferred. So here we have to observe the timestamps of both the files. So now after some time, again I will execute the same SCP command without changing any of the source files. So let us execute now. So let us verify the timestamps again. So now we can see that the timestamps are changed for both the files. That means the files are transferred again from source to target even though there is no change in the file content. Here I will create a new directory here, new directory 1. So now I will use this new directory 1 for rsync. So now let us use the rsync command for transferring to new directory 1. So this V option is a verbose mode, so which will print the output of this command. So let us execute this command now. So now it has sent both the files to the target. So let us verify in the target. So now we have to observe these timestamps for both the files. So now after some time, let us execute the same rsync command. So now if you see here, we are sending the incremental file list. So this did not send any files. This is because there is no change in the source file content. Whenever there is no change in the source files, this rsync command will not resend the files. So it always sends the incremental file list. So now let us observe the timestamps in the second server. Now we can see that there is no change in the timestamps because these files are not sent in the second time. So this is the main advantage of this rsync command when compared to SCP. So for example, if you have large files in the source machine and if you want to transfer the files from source to target, then because of connection problems, if the transfer is failed, the next time we execute the same SCP command, it will try to resend the entire file instead of the incremental file. But in case of RC, it will not send the entire file, it will only send the differences of both the source and target directories. So this is the main advantage of RC. This will be used to take the backup of the files in the source to some remote server. So now we have seen that it is preserving the timestamps. So not only the timestamps, it also preserves the permissions, symbolic links, etc. So the RC command will be used to take the backup of files in the source server to some directly in the remote server. So when SCP will be used? So generally we use SCP when we send the files with small content as well as so when we want to transfer some files on demand, we can use SCP. So in this video we have seen how rsync command and SCP commands works in detail and also we have seen what is the main difference between SCP and rsync. I hope this video helps. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching.